One of the questions that comes up most often with our clients is, what's a tax opinion? When does it become relevant? And what's the benefit of obtaining one? To give you a quick and concise answer, having a written legal tax opinion for a matter that is of course not related to something fraudulent, like a tax shelter, is that it automatically constitutes reasonable cause that will compel a judge to absolutely deny the imposition of any tax penalties. It also guarantees that you'll benefit from the three-year statute of limitation rather than the extended six-year statute of limitation. The next logical question is, what's a tax penalty? There are two primary tax penalties to be concerned about. First is the 20% negligence penalty. The second is the 20% understatement of tax penalty. The IRS can impose both of these penalties in the event that they examine your return and reverse a tax position, such as a deduction or an exclusion from income. So let's say that a particular deduction resulted in you paying $100,000 less in tax. If the IRS disagrees with that deduction, they can deny the deduction, reassess the $100,000 of tax, and add a 20% negligence penalty at $20,000 and a 20% understatement of tax penalty, also at $20,000. So the total assessment will be $140,000, 40% more than the original tax that would have been due. So to use some real world corporate numbers, a recent case from the US Court of Federal Claims upheld a $39 million penalty against a company called Alternative Carbon. In that case, Alternative Carbon's CEO had called the IRS for advice, contacted their local attorney for advice, and even paid for a consultation with a nationally recognized tax attorney. However, when the nationally recognized tax attorney strongly recommended a formal tax opinion, the CEO declined because he thought the tax opinion was too expensive. Worst mistake ever. The federal court concluded that because the taxpayer did not secure a formal tax opinion, for a transaction involving such a large sum of money, the taxpayer neither reasonably nor in good faith acted on that issue. The court upheld the penalty of $39 million. So to make it abundantly clear, if you were to rely on, let's say, an article you read on our internationally recognized online tax journal and go to the US tax court and explain, well, your honor, I read this online tax journal that was an uh, article written by Cashroom Company, even had my in-house CPA and attorney look at it and they were convinced, uh, you know, Mr. Castro has impeccable credentials, he has two law degrees, an LLM from Georgetown University Law Center, he attended the executive education program at Harvard Business School, has two published books, one's used as a textbook, the judge will still conclude that you acted neither reasonably nor prudently and the penalty will be upheld. Case closed. Now, what if you rely on a tax opinion that was issued to someone you know and their factual situation is identical to yours? Still no. The tax opinion has to be directly addressed to you. That's the only way to avoid penalties. And it's the only way to guarantee the IRS can't argue to try to extend the statutory period for assessment to six years. In the past, those that did not secure a tax opinion because they thought it was too expensive later learned the true meaning of expensive when they got hit with the tax penalties. It makes the cost of a tax opinion look like pennies in comparison. That is not something to take lightly. That's the reason that people will pay thousands of dollars to secure a tax opinion drafted by an attorney that is directed to them. A tax opinion lays out the client's specific factual situation, what the legal issue is, the law that's applicable to the situation, applies the law to the client's specific factual circumstances and makes a formal legal conclusion based on the facts and the law therein. Now, after doing some diligent research online, you may come across a business article that claims tax opinions are not bulletproof. First off, that article was not from a legal journal, but it was written by an attorney. Nevertheless, the case that the article analyzes was a taxpayer who secured a tax opinion to facilitate a fraudulent tax shelter. A tax shelter is an illegal way to try to avoid federal income tax. A legal opinion, an attorney in general, can never be used to facilitate an ongoing criminal activity. So that article is largely irrelevant to your particular situation and it was only used as clickbait. A tax opinion 
secured for a legitimate transaction or a legitimate situation has always been upheld as sufficient to avoid penalties, period. If you look at it as an investment, it has an extremely high rate of return. If you look at it as an insurance policy, you'll realize it'll help you sleep better at night. But most importantly, when you realize that unlike other firms, a Castro and Company tax opinion comes with free administrative audit defense and even in-court legal defense at no additional cost, you'll feel comfortable and confident knowing that you'll never be on the hook for anything beyond base tax plus a minimal 2% interest rate. And when you do that full and complete cost-benefit analysis, it'll become abundantly clear that you need to secure a Castro and Company tax opinion.